China has successfully landed its rover on Mars on Saturday, completing a monumental step in China's space program. The rover, named Zhurong, will be deployed from the lander for a three-month mission on Mars's surface. Meanwhile, the orbiter Tianwen-1 will keep orbiting for one Martian year, that is 687 Earth days. To conduct a global survey of the Red Planet, Chinese President Xi Jinping extended his congratulations, saying, the landing left a Chinese mark on Mars for the first time and is another landmark progress in China's space industry development. What is the rover looking for? What makes the mission so significant? I'm joined in Beijing by Xu Yansong, Director General of the Asia Pacific Space Cooperation Organization, and by Skype from London by Mark Hemsbell, editor of Space Flight Magazine. Um, Mark, let me go to you first. Uh, Tianwen 1 was launched in Ju July, actually last year, and the orbiter successfully mm -hmm. landed its rover Zhurong on May the 15th. How big a milestone is this mission? It's a very big milestone. It's a it's very difficult uh, thing to achieve. Um, it probably is the pinnacle at the moment of space activities, landing a robotic rover on a body in the solar system. So, yeah, it's as, it's, at the moment, it's as good as they get. Um, what, about, what, do you, what do you think, Mr. Xu? I mean, we talked about this before, about a month ago. Uh, what do you see as the most interesting and important part of this mission? Well, I think uh, a few days ago, we had this uh, uh, return of the lunar sample back with the uh, Chang'e 5. Uh, that time, it was the most complex mission, but uh, it has a rivalry this time. Uh, this uh, Mars mission is the most challenging one so far for the Chinese space industry, as we have a long-distance communications and a highly autonomous system on board this mission. So it's very significant to the space program uh, in China. Yeah, talking about studying, uh, you know, the planet's surface, soil, and atmosphere, uh, it will also look for signs of ancient life, including any subsurface water and ice using a ground-penetrating radar. Uh, so what do you think is the significance of the data collected by Zhurong this time around, and how will it be used? Well, I think uh, the, the, there are six instruments on board the rover, and <clears throat> the rover has a number of functions to to perform, including study the uh, uh, elements. Uh, they have uh, uh, these uh, studies uh, of uh, 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 the, uh, the soil on, on the surface of Mars, as well as the climate on the surface of Mars. And in comparison with no, uh, European uh, missions and American missions, they also study the seismic characters of Mars. So there is a, a, a data that is pulling together in the international community that we can study the Mars uh, surface and subsurface at the same time with different parameters and different uh, instruments from different nations. So a collective effort is very important in the international community for the Mars study. Indeed, uh, solidarity is key here. Mark, the New York Times reported that one goal of the Tianwen-1 mission is to better understand the distribution of ice uh, in the region, which uh, future human mm -hmm. Uh, colonists on Mars could use to sustain themselves. Is the rover looking for ways to promote uh, future human colonization of Mars? I, I think it's too early to, to start really thinking in detail about human colonization. Um, for example, if we find there is primitive life on Mars, that may ethically stop us from colonizing because we will interfere with the life processes on another planet. Um, Mars is a difficult thing to colonize, so I, th I think that Martian colonization is rather overblown. The occasional scientific mission may be, but there's, there's actually easier ways to colonize, colonize space than um, going to Mars. You know, Director Xu, um, President Xi Jinping extended his congratulations on this mission and also called for boosting China's strength in space technology and making new and greater contributions to exploring the universe and promoting the peaceful development of humanity. Um, you know, the Chinese Space Agency has highlighted the international collaboration on Tianwen-1 mission, including contributions from the European Space Agency, Argentina, France, uh, Austria, etc. How have these countries contributed to Tianwen-1 mission? Well, you know, this, uh, Mars is a long distance away. If there's a signal or uh, you want to send to, to Mars surface, it takes seven minutes minimum. So uh, an international collective effort in the 
communication and telemetry tracking and control of the whole uh, spacecraft. It is very important. Uh, you have to build a system that is r uh, around the world uh, uh, 120 degrees with each station in position of the, of the Earth's surface so that you can ha have a constant communication with your, in uh, with your spacecraft on, on either uh, in the lunar orbit, uh, Mars orbit or on the surface of Mars. So uh, communication is one effort that we're uh, cooperating with European Space Agency using their uh, international uh, deep space network to uh, control the spacecraft. And also we have uh, data that is coming back to Earth. As I said, uh, international collaboration on data sharing is also very important. Yeah, Mark, I mean, why has international cooperation been so crucial on this mission, in your opinion? Um, I, I think it's just been outlined. The, the most useful thing uh, is having scientists who are specialists in instruments so you get the best instruments from around the world onto your, onto your platform, and the communication aspects which every nation has to share because of the way the world spins round and you always want to be looking at Mars. Um, so there's, there's that. There's some cost saving sometimes. Cost saving is actually not as, not as much as you might imagine. But um, it's also a matter of coordinating the science so that all the different probes from different nations are producing science that gives us a bigger overall picture uh, and complement one another. Right. Um, you know, Mr. Xi, China is building a space station which it has vowed to keep open to countries who are like-minded in terms of the peaceful development of space. Um, how do you look at the significance of international cooperation when it comes to space exploration? I mean, what happens if there isn't any cooperation or there's simply too much politicization of it? Well, I think there's a, a political side of this uh, space activity at all times. Uh, but exploration has always bring nations together. Uh, International Space Station is one good example that nations from, from 20 countries uh, can work in, in one space or one confine, confined space. And lunar exploration has uh, less sensitivities in, in terms of uh, dual use technologies. And this also goes to Mars. And we also have uh, this uh, cooperation with NASA and European Space Agency and, and Russians, uh, Russian Space Agency on the sharing of the lunar samples and sharing of the lunar data. And uh, this also goes the uh, same to the, to the Mars mission, uh, uh, the TM-1 and, uh, and the lander and the rover. Uh, also, we have uh, a successful mission. I want to mention the technical perspective of the TM-1 mission. We have uh, the very first mission to Mars and it was a tradition that uh, Russia and U.S. All, and other countries like ESA had the first mission is always a failed mission uh, to land an uh, a, a instrument on, board this, uh, on the surface of Mars. But uh, TM-1 was, uh, managed to be a successful mission for the first one in China, from China. And also it was a good technology demonstration that we are, our competence and our technology is good. I mean, Mark, from the perspective of a European, uh, do you agree? I mean, uh, how do you look at this? Uh, yes, it, it, uh, as we've said already, it's very difficult to land on, on Mars, and it is a, a technical achievement to do it. Um, it is good that you practice on the moon first, which Europe didn't do. Um, most of the failures were much earlier. Uh, I think these days certainly... Uh, America and Europe are getting to the point where you would not expect failures, whereas back in the 1970s, uh, the technology was it was much more of a problem. Uh, but uh, and the, the first American attempt, the Viking attempt to land, worked as well. So uh, I think across the world, the technology is maturing and improving and getting more. Uh, we're, we're learning how to do it better. Uh, but the, the point this makes is that the Chinese space engineers are as good as any in the world. They can do anything that anybody else can do. Uh, finally, uh, Director Xu, how do you look at the role of the private sector in promoting the exploration of space developing? Uh, is that to I, me? Uh, to Professor Xu first. Yes, I think space mining is, uh, there, there are two aspects. There's a technical aspect and there's a legal aspect. 
Uh, currently, in the international community, only uh, I think only uh, Luxembourg uh, has passed the space mining uh, laws. Uh, but the international uh, 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 collective uh, body, including the UN uh, Peace, uh, Committee on Peaceful Use of Outer Space, and uh, many other nations have uh, some uh, difference in terms of the legal perspective. Uh, in terms of technical side, I think uh, it's possible and feasible and can also benefit the humanity, but it has to be uh, done in a proper manner because, for example, you have uh, we have watched uh, movies about aliens and all that, but there is also a uh, what we call the planetary uh, protection, that these are uh, the planetary quarantines. Uh, there are some uh, elements that we do not want to bring back to Earth. So there, uh, there is, uh, uh, I think there is a manageable way of doing this, but there has to be a systematic way as well. Yeah, uh, Mark, I mean, uh, do you have anything to add? Well, I think the, it, it, it's a very good point. The, the legal basis of law in space was a very poorly constructed treaty in the 1960s that didn't really understand what getting into space and what was important, and has left us with some very great legal difficulties, uh, which means we either have to be clever at working around the difficulties that we made or we redraft that treaty. Um, but and both are very difficult because of politics and what everybody wants out of space. Uh, but um, I think it's got to be a partnership. There's there's got to be things that governments supply to get um, consistency, to get safety, uh, and to make it easier. But also, if you leave it just to governments, then you get um, the sort of paralysis that we've had in, for example, launch vehicles where the best launch vehicle in the world at the moment could still be argued to be the Soyuz launch vehicle, which was the launch vehicle that launched Sputnik 1 in 1957. Yeah. So it's got to be a balance of things that make the overall thing mm -hmm. go forward properly. We'll have to leave it there, gentlemen. Thank you. Uh, Xi Yanfeng, Director General of the Asia Pacific Space Cooperation Organization, and Mark Hamspell, Editor of Space Flight Magazine. With that, we come to the end of this edition of The Point. Thank you for watching. I'm Wang Guan in Beijing.